Hello everyone, how are you doing today? And uh, it's the 1st of April, so I uh, hope you're all doing super great. This is no April Fool's joke. So uh, yeah, I just want to tell you a story on how I got scammed using one of the uh, online platforms. So it could actually be any of these platforms. It could be Jumia, you know, it could be OLX, it could be anything. It could be Gigi, which happens to be this one. I was actually scammed. The person fished me out and scammed me on Gigi. But I'm not saying these companies are bad. Disclaimer, I don't work for these companies and I have nothing against companies trying, everyone's trying to eat and they're trying to do legitimate uh, business. So that's just what happened to me. I just want to tell my story out there. So unfortunately, I, um, I got my console, it was an Xbox Series S console with a net worth of about 300,000 Naira, right? So you can get a fairly used one for like 200-ish, like that. So um, so let me just give you a brief history about the Xbox. So I, um, I like playing um, Xbox games. I've had all the old Xboxes, including the Xbox One, the Xbox 360, the Xbox One X. I never used the Xbox One S, but the latest Xbox I got that was close to the most recent Xbox, uh, Xbox One X is the Xbox Series S, which is a smaller compacted version or type of Xbox. It's actually a gaming console. In case anyone knows, wants to know what I'm talking about, it's a video gaming console that's similar to the uh, PS5, but that's like the PS4 Pro kind of, I guess. But the Xbox Series S, which was the one that was stolen from me by a scammer, is actually the closest thing you can get to the next gen gaming console. Basically, it's the closest thing you can get to a PS5. The reason why it's cheap is because there is no CD drive, right? And then it's a 512 gigabyte in built-in SSD. That means it's quite fast. It's cheap and it's affordable, at least for that amount. It's actually costly. 200K is no beans, no joke, especially in the economy. So that's that said, uh, if you don't know what the console is, I actually have a uh, image right here of the console. This is actually my console that was stolen, but that's the image of the console. So when did I buy the console? We're in April right now. I bought the console five months ago from a seller on Gigi. So I contacted him and said, hey, how are you doing? I'm interested in buying your console. He put in a price of 230,000 Naira. I told him, hey, I'm going to pay 200K for this. And we both agreed at about 215,000 Naira. So I got talking to the, you know, to the seller on Gigi. He was a student. He's actually a student in Mina. He's graduated now. Hey, all the best. And um, he told me that he's in Mina and he, he's going to give his uh, dad the console to bring. So I'll meet his dad in the office in the central area in Abuja and I'll buy the console from his dad. So that's what happened. So on the day I went to buy the console, after his dad showed me the console, I called him and said, hey, I'm with your dad right now. He has shown me the console. So I'm going to transfer money to you. Once you see the alert, you notify your dad and he can give me the console, that's fine. So I send the money to him, to the kid, to the guy, and it didn't come. So the, I showed the dad the transaction. I said, hey, look, this money has left my account. You know, they've debited me. This is the amount they debited. They debited 210,000 Naira. And this is the amount they debited. So like, I waited for about almost 40 minutes. And the dad said, you know what, I can go. I told him, no, I wasn't raised like that. When I do business with someone, you have to be honest, you have to be transparent. If he sees the money, then I can go. And after a while, he calls the kid and his boy tells me, tells me that, hey, I've seen the money. I'm like, okay, thank you very much. And I opened up the boot of my car. I can remember this video. I actually took this picture and sent it to my friends on our WhatsApp group. So I sent them the image and they were so happy. Like, hey, you know what? After like a year you of hard work and savings, you actually got this console that you always wanted and you got it for cheap. You didn't get a new one. That's very good. So I was so happy. And then, you know, Pushing up now, this is the month of Ramadan, I'm fasting, like I said, it's 1st of April, 2023. And on the 21st, I actually realized I hadn't been paid my salary and it was gonna be difficult for me to actually um, take care of the house. And my baby, uh, she's two, she's not really feeling too well. She was sick at that time, that was a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to prepare for Ramadan, there's no gas to cook. There is no fuel for the generator. 
we need food stock there's no rice so we're basically low and you know the month is almost over we're going to start fasting and my salary is not going to be here and i'm the kind of guy who finds it difficult to ask people for help especially when it comes to money because it's it's weird when you keep begging people for money even though you're going to pay back it's super weird after a while it just looks like you're a beggar and that's not really nice and i think uh in both religions it's actually not good to beg and borrow stuff because you know you become like a slave to the person who you're you know is owing so yeah yeah so begging was out of the way i don't like to beg so i said hey i have this xbox console I've played all the games I wanted to play on it. Why don't I just sell it and, you know, get the money and surprise my wife and take care of the house and even send her money. I'm sure she's going to be happy. So I didn't tell my wife I was going to sell my console. So I created an ad on Gigi and I uh, placed the console out there. And I set it at 230. I was actually going to sell it for, even if it's as low as 180, if that was my target. So after I created that ad, on Gigi, took pictures of the console, put it on Gigi. I received a message on Gigi that someone has viewed my phone number, right? So the name of the person was uh, Clef Derek. That's the name they used on Gigi. So they said they viewed my phone number. So I'm like, okay, fine, someone viewed my phone number. I should be expecting a call. And funny enough, after about 40 minutes therein, I received a call. So that's the image of the call I received with this blue number, which is a fake number, by the way. And I'll tell you about that in a short while. So after I received this call from this guy, he tells me that he's at Maitama. He works at Maitama General Hospital. That's if it's even true. He works at Maitama, to Maitama General Hospital and that uh, he'll come to town to actually um, run some errands for his medical superiors. So once he's in town, he's gonna to call me if I come over and then we actually look at things. But before then, we agreed on a price. So he agreed to buy it from me at 210,000 naira, which was not a bad deal. Actually, that's how much I actually bought the console. So I'm like, okay, that's totally fine. And he sounded very smart, very intelligent, right? He didn't stutter. He was very calm and collected. So yeah, back to the gist. So I actually tell this guy, okay, let's meet. Where do we meet? He said he's in, a, he's in area two. So I'm like, okay, why don't we meet at uh, Area 2 Clinic? There's a clinic in Area 2 close to a National Library. There's a National Library, Digital Library, something around between Area 2 and 3. So, yeah, cool. So I actually get there and, you know, I park my car and I keep calling his line. And eventually I see a young, slim, young man with a very nice low cut. And he had this, uh, what do you call this... Uh, twisted braids like this. This is how his hair kind of like looks like. It's, he did something like this. Uh, my wife said it's dreadlocks, but <laughs> I think they're locks. Yeah, exactly, locks. So he had locks with a low cut, right? So that's how he is. He had a slim face, slim built guy, slightly fair. So he had these locks. So I actually meet him, I'm like, oh, so you're the medical person, I'm like, fine. And he's neatly dressed. This guy tucked in had very nice clean uh, top with a long sleeve with a black trouser very nice clean pair of uh, sneakers very neat young you know handsome man who you'd actually trust definitely so yeah cool which actually happened i tr actually trusted him so uh, let me just get rid of the the wind is blowing my screen so i can't see you guys so yeah so he actually meets me and i said oh you're the guy i've been talking to he was like yeah, yeah super cool so how do we do this so i open the boot and i show him the console i open it like this is it this is the video i'm going to put the video up you can actually see the video of the console so i open it i show him the console i tell him there's an hdmi cable there's a charging cable there's the unit there's a controller and i gave him a gift the Xbox controller uses batteries. So if you want to really enjoy using the console, you should actually have, use rechargeable batteries, which I did. So I felt if I was going to sell the console with the controller, why don't I just give the person the batteries as well and a charging kit. Meanwhile, I got that charging kit for four five and I got the batteries for one eight. That's about 6,000 there. So I told him, this is a gift for you, from me to you for free. You don't need to pay for this charging kit. So yeah, he was happy. He was like, okay, help. So he asked me if I have another controller. I'm like, no, nah, I don't have a controller, but I know someone 
at Banex. His name is Israel. Actually, this is a real person. He exists. He's a very legit Xbox person. He sells Xbox, Sony, and whatnot. Okay, I'm doing ads for Israel. But if you go to old Banex, ask for Israel. If you're an Xbox fan, he's the go-to person for Xbox in Abuja. Literally. No lie. Um, so, yeah, cool. So I told him, I sent him this Israel guy's number and says, you know, if you need another controller, you can contact Israel. Israel's my guy. Does Xbox. Really good guy. You actually get this thing done. So, it was time to pay, right? So, I show you my console. And funny thing is, I actually told him, like, I'm selling the console. I love the console, but I'm selling it because we're about to start the Ramadan fasting, right? Apart from that, my baby's sick. And he saw the gas cylinder in my car and the gallon I used to buy fuel. He saw all these things in the car and I told him it's the money he's going to send me that I'm going to use to do all these things. But still, you know, people being people, he still did what he did. So I showed him, he asked for my account details and said, how much is he going to send to me? I told him we agreed 210. I gave you the charging kit. You don't need to pay for it. It's free. So send me 210,000 and I'll get my ass out of here to go and solve the million problems I have. So he laughs at that. So while we were just thinking, another dude comes up to him. He's a slim guy. He has a little scar on his face. He's dark. And the person understands Hausa, even looks Hausa. So I spoke to Hausa and the person, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, dear, like, how are you doing? And, you know, I shook the other person's hand. So the guy asks me, like, do I know this guy? I'm like, no, he's, I told him his face looks familiar and he looks like a person from the north. That's why I felt he could speak Hausa, right? So, yeah, that was just a little thing. So he tries to make the payment. He shows me, is this my account details? I'm like, yeah, that's my account details. Mamu tribe, yeah, yeah, that's my account details. So he tries to send me the money, it doesn't go the first time. So wait for like 10 minutes. He tried to send it again, it doesn't go again. So I'm like, uh, if it's network issues you're having, I can share my hotspot with you so you can actually try to make that payment because it was cloudy, it was about to rain. So it started drizzling a little bit. So I went to the car, brought out my umbrella. And I don't know, this is where I was so stupid, right? This is where I made that mistake. I decided to trust him because the other guy who was with told him that, uh, the, you're calling me because the patient is not feeling too well. That's what the other guy who came with him said. He said, ah, they are looking for you. The patient is not too well. So a sense of urgency was there for him. And it was about to rain. And I had my umbrella and it started drizzling. So for that, for some stupid and funny reason beyond me and why I actually let my guard down, I admit this is my fault. I told him he can go make the payment and he tells me and assures me that look before i reach the end of the junction i would actually see the alert right so he will definitely send the alert i'll see the alert that means he has sent it and foolishly i actually agreed i said all right take care enjoy your console you know till god joins us together again someday so i get in my car i'm like you know hoping hey whew, finally i got this console i'll be able to solve the problems at home take care of my daughter who's sick She's too, by the way, super cute baby. She's okay now. She's super duper good. So after like 10 minutes, I didn't see the alert. 15 minutes. So I parked my car and I tried calling this number. It rang. He didn't pick. I called again. It rang. He didn't pick. After another five minutes, I called and it says the number does not exist. That was when I knew I was scammed. That's when I knew I was scammed. That I made a very stupid mistake. So I quickly went back. To that area and i asked people around say they didn't see anybody like that they don't know anyone like that they didn't see anybody like that they didn't identify anyone so that was when i knew i was scammed so this is it this is my advice to everyone you know if you're using any platform and all that and also i contacted uh, gd and they were quick to respond actually they apologized for that incident and they told me they had blocked that person's contact even though any effort i made to Ask, tell them to give me the person's email or an alternative number failed. They only asked me for the number he used to call me, which is now blocked and it's no longer working. So I don't have any other means to contact this person. I don't even have their account details that would have helped. So yeah, so even if I went to the police, you know, which I tried to, but the information I had is so vague 
I don't have the person's name. I only know how he looks like. I don't know where he works. I don't really have any tangible, valuable information that can help the police investigate this person apart from a fake phone number and a description of the person. So any other thing that person tells me is most likely a scam. To the person who scammed me, in order to find peace within myself, I have forgiven you. Try as much as you can to meet your God and ask your God for forgiveness so that scamming will not be something you have turned into a habit because trust me it will curse you you will never be able to stop it will take you to an early grave because it's a sinful act and whatever value you think that money is going to do it will not be valuable there is nothing good that you can possibly do with stolen money so repent i have forgiven you all you need to do is ask god for forgiveness and you're good you're free you're free to walk the earth if you can bring it back, thank you very much. I'll really appreciate it because I miss some of my games. But either way, so this is my advice to everyone out there. If you're trying to sell something to someone online, don't go alone. Listen to people's opinions and advice. Make sure you have as much information about the other person. Ask them for an account number. And once they give you an account number, ask them for a genuine phone number, their own phone number. Install True Caller on your phone. True Caller will reveal the identity of the person. If they're using a SIM that is not theirs and you see the name that they tell you doesn't match up, it means they're not that person. They're not who they say they are. Check their account details. Tell them to send it to my Check their account details. You can always see their name on their account details. If it shows you a business account, whatever, ask for a personal account number ask for the location ask for the address go with someone if you try to make a wrong decision the person you're with would guide you that's it don't go alone they are very dangerous people and sadly i have read stories where people were raped and some were killed and some were robbed in this kind of situation so please this is 2023 people are hungry people are desperate they will do everything in their power to make sure that they destroy you, damage you, or steal from you. You also have to be very prayerful and be very, very careful who you interact with. So uh, in case you are a game person like me and you want to buy a uh, Xbox Series S console, it's a white console. I'm going to put a picture here. And my user profile is mamutroy555 at gmail.com. There's a user account. My user account name is Major Cantos. Uh, my wife's account there, her name is Fifi. And basically the games I installed on that console are there's Gears of War 5, there's Callisto Protocol. It's a very recent game and costs a lot. So I was able to save and buy Callisto Protocol. There's Resident Evil 3 Remake and Resident Evil 2 Remake. And I think I mentioned Gears of War 5 on that console. There's also Hollow Knight. I didn't give the person the second controller because I actually play some games sometimes on my PC. So I kept the second controller. If not, it would have gone. Also, I removed my external hard drive, which is a one terabyte external hard drive where I have most of my Xbox games in case I lose the console one day, whatever. I still have my external hard drive. So if you've actually um, watched this video, and uh, I'm actually going to put some uh, of the links and the details about the console in case you're a guy who tries to buy this console and you see these things, call the police, you can call me and we can actually see how we can sort this problem out and apprehend the person, you know, just in case I'm saying, because they're still out there and they're still planning to scam more people. If you're a lady, you should be extra, extra cautious because they target women a lot too. They feel women are vulnerable. So don't go alone. Go with a male. Go with a group of females as well if you can. Anytime you're doing transaction. If it's a job ad, make sure you know the exact location. Don't go to any shady place or any location. If it's a job ad, go with like five or six people and look for that same job. Don't do a solo job ad it's very risky and it's very dangerous so hopefully be safe online protect your identity online use apps like true color share your location there are apps where you can share your location with your loved ones even on whatsapp you can share your live location in case you're going somewhere so uh, with all these tips hopefully 
Stay safe out there, guys. Take care. A peace.